Hi there, thanks for joining me. I'm doing a short video tour of my sport copter vortex because I'm not taking it to the Kenbrock Freedom Fly-In this year. Next year, all bets are off. I'm hoping to be able to do that. Uh, first off, I will look at the trailer. This is uh, an Aluma trailer. Uh, they sell them in Iowa. They also have dealers out here. Uh, last year I went to Iowa to pick it up because uh, they needed a two month lag to order and I couldn't afford that amount of time to pick up the sport copter in Denver. Uh, it's a, a 7814 SBT that stands for 78 inches wide, 14 feet long, single axle, bifold tail. I put an air dam in front, keep the rocks off it. This is the landing light on the beast. Looks like just a plain ordinary incandescent. Uh, wind indicator. It has the full canopy. It can come off. Uh, spare gas tank. Uh, toolbox kind of tied down. Uh, a bunch of stuff here on the ground. I don't know if anyone's interested in that or not, but I might talk about it. Uh, rest of the canopy, pitot tube, cover, ring gear on the, the mast, uh, instrument cluster. I might have a better view from the other side. I'll just do a quick tour on this side and maybe we can talk a little bit more on the other side. This, this is the uh, rotor brake uh, plug-in for uh, the radio. Uh, spare fuel tank, shock absorbers, wheels. Uh, that aluminum piece is the top for my uh, uh, hoist that I have to remove the rotors and put them back on. Uh, eight foot ladder all lashed down. This is uh, the gear uh, to remove the uh, rotor. I got a steel cable. It's all more heavy duty than it really needs to be. Uh, rotor head weighs about 80 pounds, uh, or the, I even say the blades and the hub bar. That's the current tail number, it's going to change, right now it's a secret. Uh, that's the rotor box, that long rectangular with the single strap over it. It's got a cross strap or two. This is the bifold gate, it's really too short. So I have ramps for it. it, it it folds out to twice that length, so it's around six foot, and uh, the, the bed is 18 inches off the ground. Because it's a single axle, it's got these little things on each side so that it, it doesn't tilt unexpectedly on you. A lot of E-tracks here, I love those things. This is the tail piece for my hoist. It fits in the uh, two inch receiver on the back of the truck, so that's the pin locking and this is a two inch square piece of aluminum and it was a just a wee bit big so it had to get machined down lucky me I know a guy that has a machine shop and uh, has time on his hands uh, there's the engine it's a Honda Viking uh, it's a 110 horsepower uh, this is the oil tank right there uh, I did the annual maintenance on it uh, but I can't do the annual inspection because I didn't build this uh, gyroplane. Bought it from a guy that did, so got to pay somebody at some point coming up real soon here to go do the annual inspection. Okay, just a couple of things. This is uh, the air intake. This is the alternator. It's a car engine, so it looks like a car engine. Uh, this is the uh, starting gear, ring gear. I had to replace it. it was made out of aluminum and shortly after I purchased this from uh, Mark Tridell in Denver uh, they wanted to do a replacement of uh, that ring gear so I had to take off everything from here forward which is a good learning experience this is the power speed reduction unit a little sight glass right there you can check the oil level and uh, that's a Bendix cable that goes up to uh, pre-rotate it. Uh, this is the belt that uh, does the pre-rotation. Uh, sorry for zooming around a little too much. Uh, let's see what else. An oil breather up there. That's also where you put the oil in. 
to the oil tank. Uh, this box here has uh, two electronic control units in it. Uh, one is a backup for the other uh, in case there's a problem. It has one battery. I think that's probably the weak system. We point in the system. It's this thing here with the red top on that you can barely see right in there. Uh, this is a pneumatic pump uh, and, and uh, right there and then the air cylinder to hold the compressed air and it goes up to the uh, servos at the top that control pitch and, and roll. So I can set that from the stick. Uh, seat, tank, gas, actually separate from the seat but it's right there. Uh, eight and a half gallons there and that's a five gallon. Uh, this is uh, the pre-rotator and that's the throttle. This is the starter button. Uh, stick has some buttons on it. It's kind of hard to see but uh, there's the radio on the button and uh, on the joystick and then uh, oh the, the, the servos to control the uh, tilt of the mast. All right, this is the, the dash. It's got three big gauges on there. It's got an altimeter out from left to, from left to right airspeed, altimeter, and uh, vertical speed. Uh, this black box in the middle is a MGL uh, multimeter. It uh, controls, it watches the engine functions, also the uh, engine RPM, uh, exhaust gas temperature, cylinder head. Uh, oil pressure, temperature. Uh, that's my uh, Red Lion RPM indicator for the rotor. A uh, bunch of little switches here for this is the backup pump. There's two pumps. Uh, this is the backup electronic control unit. This is the master on. Down here we have oh, uh, communication radio and transponder mode C. And this, I really haven't figured out the usefulness of it, so it, it, it where is it? Right there, this, this guy. It does a uh, gauge to control the burn rate of the fuel. Well, the MGL tells me my burn rate anyway, so, uh, and, uh, and total burned fuel, so that's supposed to, that should be enough. I might find something else useful to put in where that gauge is. Uh, main power on, transfer, this, uh, this latch here I've never used. That one transfers the fuel from these auxiliary tanks to the main tank. The way the engine is set up, because it's fuel injection and not carbureted, is it's got a pump that pumps in and it can feed from only one tank. So I have to move the fuel from these two side tanks that feed simultaneously through that little low pressure filter up into this tank and then from this tank in through this high pressure filter that I just replaced into the injector system. Uh, this little tank on top is the coolant. It's Evans coolant. It's supposedly you never need to change it which is cool. It's not water based. Uh, this box here is a big storage box. It's got my ramps in it and a bunch of other stuff that's very useful and who's that guy? Uh, maybe I could show you a few more things if you're still with me. This is a tugger that I use. It's, uh, it's called a Perkett 360. It's made in Canada. They sell it at the RV show and uh, at the Fairplex uh, County Fair grounds. Uh, during the RV shows they have there, not the County Fair. Anyway, so works really good. It's got a 12 volt battery. I use it to tug this trailer. I use it to tug our travel trailer. And uh, without that, I could not park this thing on the side of the house. It's just way too intricate to be trying to back in with a truck. Lashed down uh, fresh front wheel. Uh, I've had problems with that in the past. It wants to loosen up. These wheels are locked. The side, main wheels are actually pretty easy to lock down. Okay, I meandered over here to show you yet another fuel filter in there. Uh, Let's see, what else can I point out? Okay, these are the uh, coil over 
spark plug in, uh, ignition system, which I think is kind of nice. Uh, replaced the spark plugs uh, recently. It was very easy. Uh, the fuel rail is this uh, silver piping right there uh, for the injector system. Uh, notice the short exhaust pipe. I mean, it's like about a foot long. That's about it. And uh, uh, the radiator for the coolant system. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this. This is the rudder gust lock. That was a major issue when I was hauling it back from uh, Denver. I, I didn't have a way to keep the rudder from flapping. I tried tape, and of course, that didn't work. Uh, so at airports, I've seen these rudder gust locks before. So I thought, you know what? I'll make one. It's really very simple. It is just what it is, a piece of wood lined with fabric on the inside. Uh, let's see here, a suspension system, which I'm looking forward to trying out. Uh, I think it'll make my bad landings look pretty good. Oil cooler. Yes, indeed. There is an oil cooler here, too. So the engine should run very cool. Uh, well, I think that's about it. I, don't, I can't think of anything else to really talk about. Uh, rudder pedals uh, with uh, toe brakes, both sides. Uh, had a little leaky brake issue. Turned out it was just a, a loose uh, fitting on the brake line. It uh, doesn't seem like any air got in the system. Um, looking forward to flying this thing at some point in the near future. Anyway, all for now. Bye.